Greetings, Clarifiles. In this video, I'm going to talk about something that uh, has its source in something I saw on the internet. A few uh, weeks ago, I saw this company was selling a uh, plastic clarinet, student clarinet, and um, they sell professional clarinets, but this was their student model, and I think it's made out of plastic. Uh, but I was reading through the specs, and all of a sudden I noticed that it has a wooden barrel. Wow! That's added value. That's going to be a big, big sales thing. You know why it shouldn't be? Because the last place you want wood is in the barrel. Let me see if I can explain. The closer you get to the tip of the reed and tip of the mouthpiece, all up through here, even down into here, the stability and of the dimensions, the bore dimensions, and the stability of the material is extremely critical. You have a lot more dimensional tolerance in terms of variability when you get on this end of the clarinet than when you do up here. Now, when I was teaching clarinet in Connecticut years ago, we'd had quite a few extremes in weather, and that mean that meant to me that my equipment played a lot different in December or January, February than it did in June and July. Uh, really a lot different in many, many ways. And of course I was always worried about my clarinet cracking, barrels cracking, loose rings and other things like that in the, in the dry uh, indoor heating that we had up in Connecticut. It was a big problem. And when I began to measuring equipment one of the things that really jumped out at me was the incredible difference in the dimensions of barrel tapers and, and the bo barrel bores that were from summer to winter. I mean, I'm not talking about small stuff. I'm talking about drastic differences as their effect on... You're dealing with wood, and you're dealing with an unstable material in the first place. The clarinet made in wet and humid northern France... Uh, is not the same clarinet that arrives in high and dry Colorado. Let's put it that way. And the dimensions vary quite a bit, considerably. But that's obvious, right? But what is not so obvious with players <clears throat> is that is the effect of weather on their wood barrels, on their wood clarinet, from, you know, weather extremes from summer to winter and other times of the year. Well, in order to help solve that, one of the biggest problems with the clarinet, by the way, is consistency, is having the clarinet interface consistently with you day after day after day. That's the way you can help make progress behind your nose. If everything is changing in the clarinet from day to day to day, then making progress behind your nose with your tone production and articulation and, and technique it's going to be more and more challenging. The more you can stabilize the clarinet, I mean, imagine if the clarinet were as stable as the flute, right? You pick it up every day, it's going to play the same. Just, you know, a flute player might say it doesn't play the same, but compared to the clarinet, it plays incredibly the same. And so it would be with a trombone player or a trumpet player or whatever. But with the clarinet, we have the variability of the reed, and we also have the variability of the wood. Flute players, of course, of course, ditched wood a long time ago, and they got conditioned to the sound of the flute, made out of metal, and they make them out of different metals, and they love playing them, and it's really a superior instrument. It gives you more beautiful sound, more depth, and so on and so forth. So that didn't seem to bother them, but clarinet players, they continued to doggedly hang on to uh, the old woods that they were made out of for reasons I don't clearly understand, uh, so I won't speculate on that. Uh, but if you're playing a wood clarinet and you insist that wood is the superior stuff, then 
I guess one of the questions I would ask, since it seems a little arbitrary to maintain that, if you play a hard rubber mouthpiece, but you insist on having a wood barrel, this really doesn't make any sense to me. If you're not bothered by playing a hard rubber mouthpiece, you should not be bothered by playing a hard rubber barrel or some fine synthetic barrel. Barrels are made from different substances. The main thing that you want in the barrel and the mouthpiece is you want stability. Uh, you know, I remember when I was at Yale, I, a German orchestra came through and the Germans were playing wood mouthpieces. And I learned that they had one of the clarinet players was a mouthpiece maker. He finished mouthpieces, and it was necessary because on the road, the wood mouthpieces changed. They changed a lot, and he had to work on them often when he went to different areas with different climates because the facings would warp and uh, other things would be unstable about the wood. Now, they liked the wood, would sound fine, uh, but... It was always a problem adding more complexity to the consistency of the clarinet. Well, in, in America, as in France and other places, we simply solved that by using a very stable material. It's called pure natural hard rubber. Or at least my mouthpieces are made out of pure natural hard rubber. I understand there's some synth synthetic materials added in some makers' uh, so-called hard rubber mouthpieces, but not not mine anyway. So, and the reason we play those hard rubber mouthpieces uh, is because they're consistent. They play with a great deal of consistency. You might say they're the bedrock of consistency when you look at the rest of the clarinet, the wood moving all over the place, always in danger of cracking. And then uh, you have the barrel with the bore being highly variable. And then the reed itself really is... Uh, a perpetual problem, as you know, with weather changes, climate changes, seasonal changes, uh, and then other things that we just can't seem to, to define. Well, one of the things you can do to increase the stability of the interface of your clarinet when you play is to find yourself a hard rubber barrel or some synthetic barrel that's going to give you, at the very least, as consistent a dimensions as your mouthpiece does. This makes a tremendous difference in the stability of the clarinet because, again, the variability of dimensions and so on as you get closer to the mouthpiece affects um, you know, the resistance and the color and shape and response of the clarinet tremendously. When you, if you made those changes, say, lower in the clarinet, you would hardly be able to perceive them, probably not at all. But up there, it's really critical. So getting back to the manufacturer that were, was offering the clarinet with a, wood, with a wood barrel, this plastic clarinet with a wood barrel, what they, asked, what they were offering was a perceived benefit that was not really a benefit at all. In fact, it's a liability, and it's a problem. A young player should not be worrying about whether the, the rings get loose, whether the bore moves at all. The young player should be worry-free about any part of the clarinet as much as possible, and that includes uh, the barrel and the problems that often happen with the barrel, especially, you know, in places where you have seasonal extremes in weather and humidity. So, uh, just let me encourage you, for your own sake, uh, I mean, we we sell our own barrels, we sell our, sell our Iverlon barrels, which are really lovely, uh, but the main thing is that I think you should consider looking into ditching your wood barrel if you possibly can, and for the sake of having that consistent, a greater consistency in the interface of your clarinet with your mechanics. And that's what I would recommend. I think that uh, the variabilities that you face with bore changes, the bore changes that I saw when I measured clarinet bores up in Connecticut for several years, uh, they were disturbing. Uh, and I perceived them in the way those barrels responded and played and tuned. So do yourself a favor 
uh, you may reject the idea out of hand. But I think it's a good thing to look into because once you find a barrel that you really like and it's made out of natural hard rubber or if it's made out of some other synthetic and you really like it, you like its response, you like its sound, know this, it's going to play the same way for you in May as it's going to play in February. Now, wish I could guarantee that with reeds, but I can't. And that's my story. And I'm sticking to it.